cases like these, you're always finding um, there might be other victims and there might be other perpetrators. We have enough where I have indicated to my legal team and the investigators there are at least two persons we expect to be charged in the next couple of weeks. Um, simply for facilitating, we would have warned in the past that if you see this kind of, um, this, you have a notification of this kind of thing, you have every reason to know that that money can't be yours if you are dealing with that money that is actually a part of the definition of money laundering. So there are a couple of persons. I will tell you, our investigations also show that there are some of the money went overseas. So there's also um, some persons who, that's why I'm saying it's going to continue because there are parties who are operating and they will continue to operate. So but there are two things. One, we want to get back the monies that are here. We have worked with the banks to determine who has what and to get those back to the persons who own them and then to go after the persons who we feel are criminally liable. I don't want to comment too much because like, it's an investigation like this, it continues, and we have to look at all angles. We have to not just look at the persons who actually were money mules and whose accounts the money was put into. Yeah, but you're, we also have to ask ourselves, any um, viable investigation department has to ask itself, to what extent does this go? Is there, what is the safety, the protocols within the banking system? Um, although we are assured that those banks spend a lot of money to ensure that, um, that, that you have uh, fail-safe systems, the fact is it's, um, it's a human technology and it's going to be bypassed. And there's also one thing you can never count out, and that is the human spirit, the human mind, the proclivity to um, corruption. You can never, never say no, right? So we are looking at everything.